Okay, we're going to do this using Easy ETL. So I'll start by making a new project, which I'll call Migrate Tickets. Then we'll choose the DB2 database where I've got this, these uh, old tickets that I want to migrate. I can, of course, use select here at this point to choose which table I want to use. And once this is in place, I can then connect and discover the input schema. When I press OK, all of these attributes are automatically mapped out to my target, which is just fine for the time being. Now I can step through and look at some of this data. The TDI data collector then shows us the input that's coming in, and we can see many of these tickets are closed. So we're going to want to deal with that later. We don't want to write all these closed tickets to TSRM. So now it's time to configure our target. So let's stop this and then choose the Maximo connector here for our target. Then we configure this one. I also have to tell it which objects I'm going to be working with with this connector. Now to figure out what these are, I went to Maximo, logged in, and then went under uh, Integration Object Structures. And here I'm going to search for uh, incident. And I can see here it's the MXOS incident which was set up for TDI use. So that's what I'm going to use. MXOS incident. And then we have to get the MBOs. These are the actual objects we'll be working with. The MXOS incident is just the schema. Okay, I'm getting a problem here sending this request, and I see that I forgot to add the port number here. So we'll just add the port that's set up for this server and try again. And now it's able to read the schema, request it, read it, and present me with the objects. And it's this first one here that I want. If for some reason this doesn't work, you can try for Maximo to regenerate the schema. So you select this object structure, and then you use the Select action here to generate schema. Once this is done, TDI will be able to request it and then use it. Under the Advanced section, we want to turn on XML character validation, and we also have a detailed log. This is the same as all TDI connectors. So if we want more information coming in the log for debugging, that's a good place to enable. And finally, under More, it's the enterprise services that this connector will be calling to do the various operations on these objects. Now to find out what those are, again I went back to Maximo. This time I went to Integration Enterprise Services. And I can see I'm lucky enough that whoever set this up has specified which of these different objects or different configurations are designed for TDI. And if I'd also searched for incident, it would have limited me to this right here. So I see MX incident create, delete, query, and update. And if all has been set up correctly now, I can press connect and then discover the schema of that TSRM system. Now, as soon as we've done this, we can see immediately that a number of these attributes show up in red, which is telling us that these don't exist in the target schema. In fact, none of these input attributes can be mapped directly to outputs. I'm going to just simply disable them by entering a blank for each of the names. And then instead, I'm going to choose those attributes that I want to write. Now I know I need to write a class attribute because that tells TSRM what type of object I'm trying to create. Now the minute I did that, it also opened up the transformations because I'm going to have to compute the values for these attributes based on my input information. 
I'm also going to grab the description and the description long description. Now for the class, I double click on the transformation and I get a JavaScript window where I can compute the value I want. And this will just be a constant string incident. I can press evaluate and see how my JavaScript is going to behave. Then for description, I'm going to use the summary. But I'm going to preamble it with PPRS colon space. And then I can use control space start typing the name of an attribute, and TDI gives me completion. Let's evaluate this and see how the JavaScript works. Finally, here for the long description, I'm going to include some additional attributes which aren't being written anyplace else. We'll put in reported by, and then add the user, and then I'll add on to that the date, and finally, the printer ID, this was reported on. Let's see what that's going to look like. Now, let's try to read and write one more record. I take a look on the input. This is the same input information we were getting. There in the output, I can see those attributes that I'm writing out. The class of incident, the description, and this long description that we created. So let's go back to TSRM and see if there's any data that's been written. This time I'll go to Service Desk and look at my incidents. Since I've preambled the summary or the description with PPRS, I can do this, and it should find those which have a summary starting with PPRS. So here's one that I just added. Now we saw here in the input, I'll go back to the input, that this guy was actually closed. So I'd like to add some logic to skip those that are closed. And the only place where I can add JavaScript is in a transformation. So I can grab any one of these check to see if the status is closed, and if so, I can tell it to skip this one and go and grab the next one. And that code looks like this. Exit branch tells the assembly line to stop processing this object, and this is happening as data is being transformed before the write, and to go back and read the next one. We'll go back to our assembly line and stop it, and then run it again for one record. And we'll see a couple of things happening. First, you'll notice that 43 input records were processed, because our transformation script here is skipping all those with status equal closed. So the first ones coming through have a status of open. So let's read a couple of more and write a couple of more to TSRM and then we'll go check our results. If I now search for PPRS, we should see that there are three more. And that concludes this demonstration of integrating TSRM with EasyTL.